Quite a gamble for the Derby manager, Peter Taylor. Three key players all pushed back into action for this vital match after recent injuries. Archie Gemmell has got a problem behind the knee. Kenny Burns, a hamstring. Paul Hooks, a stomach muscle injury. And uh, the boost, though, that they probably need after two successive defeats have put Derby County firmly back in trouble at the bottom. Meanwhile, the Fulham side that goes looking for that victory today is the one that beat Carlisle last week. The good news for manager Malcolm McDonald is that Gordon Davis, who picked up a slight injury in that game, has reported fit. But for all their good intentions, they know that the job is not entirely in their own hands anymore. The referee is Ray Chadwick of Darwin in Lancashire. And taking his place at the baseball ground, the great Jackie Stamps, now sadly blind, but a great hero of Derby County and a member of their cup-winning side of 1946. He has the match read for him by a friend. So Derby County in white attack the goal to our left. Fulham in an all-change strip of red on a crucial afternoon. And it's unthinkable, really, a few weeks ago to believe that so much could be resting on today's game. With Fulham at one point this season, 12 points clear of the fourth club in the promotion race. And Derby County, on a real roller coaster season, were once nine points away adrift at the bottom. And then 15 games without a defeat and then defeat in their last two has suddenly put them right back into trouble again. Derby needing a point, and Fulham wondering what's going to be happening in the game between Leicester City and Burnley. And now it's Coney, it's got Davis in the middle, Houghton, and a misunderstanding there, allowing Paul Hooks to bring the ball away for Derby County, and Brown stopping it. To a certain extent there for Fulham, only as far as Broly, then Brown again with the head, a lot helping it on. Here's Gemmell, and a good ball by Archie Gemmell to Paul Inson. And allowed to go a long way, sadly for Derby, their number eight Bobby Davison couldn't quite gather it up. And it'll be a goal kick. jump there by Coney and Gordon Davis going through was he shoved the referee had a good hard look at it and for a moment Derby were in terrible trouble and a shove came from Foster but it wasn't an unfair one according to the referee right on there Davis was through Foster is after him Foster playing the ball and I would say the referee was right Hopkins beaten there that time by Emerson it's Wilson Brown turning it away for Fulham. It's Darby's throw. Paul Emson again with it to Kenny Burns. Back to Emson again. It's on the transfer list, Paul Emson. Oh, and no! Miraculously, it stayed out. Ronnie's header. And it was a moment of great good fortune for Fulham because it could so easily have hit Jerry Payton and bounced into the back of the net. What about this? Emson's cross, which is a perfect one. Ronnie's header. And off the crossbar, down onto the goalkeeper, how easily that could have gone over the line. And Peyton grabs it before it could. I think it was an accident, but the pain must have been pretty acute, and the referee feels obliged to have a word with Jeff Hopkins. This is the moment, and that's what the talking is about. And the young Welshman getting quite a talking to from Ray Chadwick. Derby management of Roy McFarland on the right and Peter Taylor just hoping that Paul Hooks can get himself up on his feet and back into the action. Well, Hooks is okay. Derby might probably get a free kick. Archie Gemmell will take it. 
And Roger Brown gets it away for Fulham. Fucha. Now, can Bolly keep that one? No, after the rain, the ball really skidding off the turf, it, off the uh, turf at the baseball ground. And it'll be a goal kick. Good jump there by Lewington. Just nick that one away for O'Driscoll. In turn, he is stopped there by Hooks. Or half stopped by Hooks, enough to give uh, Fulham the free kick at any rate. Gale. And again to Lewington. Gale. Played in for Wilson, and now for Davis. And Emerson getting it away. That wasn't very good, though. Straight to Gale. And now Robert Wilson. Oh, and that's an interesting ball there. And a, sh and a header that was just kept out from Coney. And Davis, I think, quite properly is claiming that he was pushed. And Peter Taylor, needless to say, was worried by that. You have to question whether it was a push on Gordon Davis. And you have to say it was a very good header coming in at the far post from Dean Coney. Houghton with the corner for Fuller. Fisted away by Cherry. And now Emson. Kept in well by O'Driscoll. And now for Houghton. With O'Driscoll going outside him. Played inside, but it was an offside against Davis in any case. Although the referee said, as the keeper's safely in possession, let's go on with the game. Foster. That's the keeper's ball. Okay, not a very good clearance that time by Peyton. Finding Emson, who's got a bit of pace about him. Hopkins is after him, and he's got it in, and just over the top. Hopkins on the chase but Emson in pole position. This cross wasn't maybe what quite the forward runners wanted, and it went over the back, and it's a goal kick. So we're now playing uh, stoppage time at the end of the first half. And Burns is surely trying to do what is safe, and gets the second third it. All flipped on nicely there by Davison for Wilson. But he's got Tony Gale to contend with, who in turn finds Roger Brown. Gale again for Fulham. Tony, but Foster there first. Well, it's half time here at the baseball ground. And so far, Derby County are on course for the point they want. Fulham at the moment don't know what they want. But of course, they'll be going for a win. At the moment, though, as the players come off at half time, after a very tense first half, the score here is Derby County nil, Fulham nil. So, Fulham in the red strip get the second half underway. In the next 45 minutes, we'll decide just what sort of rewards there will be for these two clubs after nine months of real hard slog. Will Fulham go up, or will Derby stay in the second division? Derby, in fact, uh, are off on holiday to Mallorca at 6.30 tomorrow morning. Down to Lewington. Derby are warming much more to their task in this second half. Emson taking on uh, Hopkins again, and Hopkins had the pace that time. Goes. Oh, my word, that was a real swipe at Hopkins there by Hooks. Can't get away with that. Certainly there was a nasty challenge by Hopkins in the first half, and the revenge motive came in there, but uh, the referee is booking Hooks, and look at that. I mean, for heaven's sake, what's the game about? And uh, Paul Hooks, if anything, uh, lucky to stay on, and then the little tangle with Kenny Burns after that. He's going into the book. And if he strays out of line a fraction more, he surely will have to go. And he's, in many ways, maybe lucky to be staying on now. OK, 
Hale with the kick to Fuller. Oh, well, dummy by Wilson didn't fool Foster. The long ball sending Wilson on his way. And Peyton there up onto the roof of the stands for a Derby County throw. And Arthur McDonald probably knows that it was 0 0 at Leicester. And he must have really urged his men to look for that winning goal. Wilson. Wellington had one little snap it in. He also had a nice snap it in from Roger Brown. And now Broly with the shot. And Locke, happy to get that one away. It's played there uh, for Broly. And thwacked it against the post and away. It's away. Gale, and now Wilson, Lewington, Gale, to Lock, and towards Wilson, it might come now for Lewington, caught for the moment of having a long-range pocket goal, Houghton, getting past Gemmell, can he do the same to Barton, he can't, but it's a corner, forward come Brown and Gale, and Hopkins, who's a big lad too, and just Lewington, Lock, and the keeper, who is a good 10 yards outside his penalty area, staying at the other end of the field. So there are plenty of red shirts in that Derby County area at the moment. Coming in there towards Roger Brown. Gale is in there too. Brown tries an overhead, Davis! But he was offside. And there was little doubt that he was offside. In the came in it was Roger Brown who was making the first impression there Tony Gale then got his header and suddenly from that overhead well I'm not sure that he was all that offside looking at it again Archie Gamble might just have been playing him onside but it was all pretty academic because the man missed in any case and there's Davison Wilson's here supporting Result didn't cause Dale too many problems, but now Gemmell finds Broly. Barton crossed in once more, missed by Wilson. Can Emson keep it in? Just so it may not be over yet. Broly with a header and hit into the roof of the net. Superbly there by Davison. are on the pitch the dogs are on the pitch to get them off Fulham's promotion hopes seem to be shattered and Derby look as though they're going to survive in the second division and staying up staying up staying up is the cry from the baseball crowd. And Malcolm McDonald knows that the long, hard struggle could end in failure for Fulham and how they must be regretting their three successive defeats a couple of weeks or so ago. And Emson running it out. They're going to take Archie Gemmell off now. Obviously, no, it's uh, Fulham making the substitution. They're taking Sean O'Driscoll off. Fulham are taking off O'Driscoll and putting on a young midfielder, John Reeves. And the police are really here in force now. You don't often see that on a second division football ground making sure there's not another pitch invasion by these excited Derby County fans. 
John McCall coming on, a big, strong and dependable and experienced defender. Derby obviously intent on making sure that they hold on to what they've battled for and got. But at the moment, Fulham are on the break. But... It's going to be... Uh, already on the pitch and the referee surely isn't going to allow that all around Steve Cherry's goal as Hopkins comes forward now with Gale remarkable scenes behind that goal as Davis goes in and there's the header save look at that They're actually on the pitch the whistle uh, in fact the whistle had gone and the flag was up for an offside gives you an idea of the depth of feeling for football in this great old footballing town. That survival in the second division can generate as much excitement as this has today. Coming to the last minute or so of the game, Houghton played in for Gale. For Houghton again. Oh, did Cherry get a touch? Yes, he did, because the corners indicated a very good strike indeed by Houghton and just tipped away there by Cherry you could see it but getting the corner taken might be a little more difficult in its way in its very small way we're back in Wembley in 1923 when the crowd were on the touchline and the cup final was being played then between West Ham and Bolton today it's the baseball ground it's Fulham against Derby County and Dale trying manfully to get a shot in but Derby on the break again and it's Butcher who's made a tremendous break and then couldn't quite gather up the ball and they get it back to Jerry Creek they're well on the pitch now all the way around the fans Emson and it's Brooks now for Derby County behind for the goal kick Played only two minutes of injury time and uh, he's looked at both lines when the thumbs were up. Malcolm McDonald knows it's the second division next season. I don't think he's all that happy with the uh, with this crowd. I've never seen uh, he was saying anything like this. Can't believe it. And I honestly feel that it can't be right. The last minutes might be a formality, but it can't be easy for the players out there. Lock. Lewington played on again towards Wilson. The crowd gets back, or at least tries to get part, back partially behind the lines. Wilson once again, and it was actually tackled by somebody in the crowd. The linesman's flagging. Well, that was always likely to happen, and I mean it's a crazy situation now. I'm not at all sure that effort shouldn't have been made to get put the uh, crowd behind those barriers the moment they started to appear. Once they were allowed to come through, they were followed by others, and now, of course, it's a situation that's totally out of hand. There's no way you're going to get them back behind the barriers. And they're right around the goal, for example. It's all very well for the policeman to start waving them back. I don't think he's got a chance. And he's back in the crowd again. And they're all around the goal where Steve Cherry is in that derby goal. It's a crazy situation. Lewington now with the uh, throw. Now there, crossed in once more. Brown heading it on. Wilson's there too, looking to get a volley in, but couldn't manage it. They still can't get it away. Now they can. Well, the 
loudspeaker is imploring them to get behind, but there really is whistling in the dark. But the final whistle, and Derby have survived. Whether they survive this invasion might be another thing. Fulham know that they have to play in the second division again next season. Their promotion run is over. They are beaten by Davison's goal. And Derby know that they have survived the threat of a drop into the third division. And the celebrations start now at the baseball ground. So, amazing scenes. You would have thought they'd won the second division championship rather than the other way around, just survived at the other end of the table. But that's what it means to this grand old footballing town of Derby. Mike Volley, who'd had a tremendous game, I thought, for Derby today. Almost lost his shorts there for a moment. But there are smiles everywhere for Derby and their fans today. So the final score is Derby 1, Fulham 0. Yes, indeed, as Brian Moore said, scenes of amazing jubilation from the Derby fans. They are guaranteed second division football again next season. And so it would seem are Fulham, having missed out on promotion.